video segment is going to be about the Chatelier's principle and kind of how it applies to what we're doing in this unit. So uh, first of all, the Chatelier's principle, when we take a look at it, uh, we're looking at how do we shift or how do we change an equilibrium. So if we have something at equilibrium, what can we do to push it one direction or the other? Uh, if we want to make it more reactant favored or make it more product favored, okay? So the official definition, if we look at this, says if a stress is applied, now the word stress means some, and some sort of factor, some sort of change, okay? But we use the word stress here. So if a stress is applied to a system in equilibrium, system changes to relieve the stress, okay? It really is no different than, you know, the concept of stress for you guys, right? So if you feel like you're under stress, for some reason, maybe AP testing's coming up, you know, maybe you have a lot of work to do over the weekend, maybe you have a test coming up, something that provides stress in your life that you usually shift or modify behavior to relieve that stress, okay? So uh, maybe you reduce your workload at your job. Maybe you, uh, if you have a lot of work coming up, uh, or a big family gathering or something like that, you make food early so that way the food is made ahead of time so you're not so stressed out during the actual event, those kind of things. So um, we do this naturally, and that's why the term stress really does apply here. Okay. Now, there are three basic factors that we can mess with in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. We can mess with the concentrations, the temperatures, and the pressures. Okay. So these are the three things. Notice how the term catalyst, again, is not here because catalysts don't affect equilibriums. Okay, so we're really working around shifting those concentrations, those temperatures, and those pressures. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump to a website, and that website is going to kind of help walk us through these three different parameters. Okay, Le Chatelier's principle states that if an external stress is applied to a system at equilibrium, the system adjusts in such a way that the stress is partially offset. The word stress means a change in concentration, pressure volume, or temperature. Click on one of the buttons below to view animation showing the effect of these stresses on a system at equilibrium. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, concentration, and we're going to do that one first uh, in terms of how we can actually stress the system. Iron 3 thiocyanate, which is FeSCN3, dissolves readily in water to give a red solution. The red color is due to the presence of hydrated iron thiocyanate ions. FeSCN2+. The equilibrium between undissociated iron thiocyanate ions, iron 3 plus ions, and thiocyanate ions SCN- minus, is given by this chemical equation. FeSCN2 plus aqueous, which is red, in equilibrium with iron 3 plus ions, which are pale yellow, plus SCN- minus aqueous, which is colorless. Click on one of the buttons to add sodium thiocyanate or remove iron 3 plus ions from the solution. Okay, so if we look right now, we're kind of an orange color because the equilibrium has shifted so far. We're a little bit more reactant favored here, right? We have more iron thiocyanate than we do the iron ions and the thiocyanate by itself, okay? So here's your equilibrium, here's your equilibrium equation. Everything's in solution. But when they go in solution, some of them stay together, some of them break apart. So more of them stay together than break apart right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to add more sodium. We're going to add some sodium thiocyanate. Okay. Now if you notice, the sodium isn't part of this expression at all. So if it's not part of the expression, the sodium really won't affect this as long as it doesn't change something inside the parameters. Now we know sodium ions are very soluble, so sodium ions here are going to be more of a spectator. However, by adding sodium thiocyanate, the SCN, we're adding more SCN in. So that's the stress. We're going to put extra of this stuff in, so this is going to go up. But then the system has to shift to adjust because of that stress. So let's see what happens. In this case, the stress applied to the equilibrium system is an increase in the concentration of thiocyanate, SCN minus, from the dissociation of sodium thiocyanate. To offset this stress, some iron 3 plus ions react with some of the added thiocyanate ions, and the system shifts from right to left to re-establish equilibrium. When the system shifts to the left, iron thiocyanate ions are produced, which have a red color. Consequently, the red color of the solution deepens as more iron thiocyanate ions, FeSCN2+, are produced. Note that the sodium ions are not shown in the simulation because they are spectator ions. Okay, so we put more sodium thiocyanate, sodium is a spectator. 
that means the clear stuff went up. So there's too much clear. So to get rid of some of that, it used some of the yellow and made more of the iron thiocyanate red stuff. So what we say there is that the, the reaction shifts to the left or it shifts towards the reactant side. Because we had too much of this, that was our stress. To get it to shift this way, some of this had to go away. But this can only go away if it uses some of that. So we actually had to use up some of the yellow to make more of the red. Okay. So if our goal here was to get rid of all of the iron ions to by themselves, to get rid of all the yellow, we could just keep adding sodium thiocyanate and keep adding more and more and more of this stuff until this was completely gone. And at that point, once we run out of Fe3+, if we keep adding more and more and more of this stuff in, it's called breaking an equilibrium. You actually can break that equilibrium where you get rid of one of your products in this scenario. Okay, So that's our um, first scenario. If we go back, if let's now let's go the other direction. So let's just come in here and take away iron. Okay. Now, how would you remove iron? Okay. Well, what you could do is you could introduce something else into the chemistry. Let's say a carbonate or a phosphate. Iron carbonate and iron phosphate are not soluble. So you could do a, some sort of like double displacement reaction here, where the iron would bond to the carbonate and leave as a solid. And if you do that, then the Fe3 plus would actually leave the reaction. Okay, so what happens if we remove the iron 3? Oxalic acid ionizes in water to form the oxalate ion C2O4 2 minus, which binds strongly to the iron 3 plus ions. Free iron 3 plus ions are removed from the solution as the stable yellow ion iron 3 oxalate is formed. The system shifts from left to right to replace some of the iron 3 plus ions. As the system shifts to the right, the concentration of iron thiocyanate ions, FeSCN2+, decreases. The red solution turns yellow due to the decrease in concentration of the red iron thiocyanate, FeSCN2+, ions, and the formation of the yellow iron 3 oxalate ions. Note that the reaction between iron 3 plus ions and oxalate ions is not shown. The shift in the equilibrium position is the focus of the simulation. Okay, so because we took away the iron 3 plus, that left kind of a hole here. So that forced the red iron SCN2 plus to make more of it. As a result, also made more clear. So the overall change is it became more yellow because we're losing red and gaining the yellow back, and we're adding just a bunch of clear stuff in. Okay? Let's move on to pressure. Consider the equilibrium between iodine gas molecules, I2, and iodine atoms at high temperature. Iodine molecules in the gas phase are a purple color, and iodine atoms are colorless. Under the given reaction conditions, the ratio of I2 molecules to iodine atoms is 2 to 3 at equilibrium, as shown in the microscopic view. Let's stress this system by changing the pressure. Click on one of the pressure buttons. Okay, so first of all, pressure only affects reactions that have an unequal ratio of gases in it. Okay, so if we look, we have a 1 to 2 ratio of iodine. Okay, I don't care that there's a coefficient down here because that thing's bound together in a single particle. So our ratio here is for every one I2, we have two I's, which means you have a two to one ratio. So pressure can only affect you if you have an unequal gas ratio, which means you can't just have equal gases there. You have to have some sort of one or the other. Okay? Um, doesn't mean you can't have solids, liquids, and solutions here, but you have to have an unequal gas ratio for pressure to affect you. So let's increase the pressure now. You have increased the pressure by decreasing the volume of the container. The system can partially offset this stress by decreasing the moles of gas. Recall that pressure is directly proportional to the moles of gas. Because of the 2 to 1 mole ratio in the balanced equation, the moles of gas can be decreased if the system shifts to the left, producing iodine molecules and decreasing the number of iodine atoms, as you can see in the microscopic view. As more iodine molecules, which have a purple color, are produced, the color of the equilibrium mixture darkens. This can be seen in the macroscopic view. Note that the total number of gas particles has decreased from 10 to 8. 
All right. So if you put more pressure in, okay, the system shifts to get rid of free moving particles. So what they do is they take two of them that were by themselves away from each other and hook them together. Okay. Now being hooked together means they take up less space because they're now bound to each other instead of free floating away from each other. So you always shift. If you have increased the pressure, you shift away from the high moles to the low moles. Okay, so since we increase pressure, we go from we shift away from the two to the one. Okay, now the exact opposite will happen if we decrease pressure. You have decreased the pressure by increasing the volume of the container. Le Chatelier's principle states that this stress will be partially offset. The system can partially offset this stress by increasing the moles of gas. Pressure is directly proportional to the moles of gas. Because of the 2 to 1 mole ratio in the balanced equation, more moles of gas can be produced if the system shifts to the right, producing more iodine atoms, as you can see in the microscopic view. As more iodine atoms, which is a colorless gas, are produced, the color of the equilibrium mixture lightens, as you can see in the macroscopic view. Note that the total number of gas particles has increased from 10 to 12. Okay. So because we decrease pressure now, we're going to shift from the small number of moles to the bigger number of moles because you want more particles floating around in this extra space that you have. Okay, So we went from 10 to 12 different particles up here. Now let's move on to temperature. Consider the following reaction at equilibrium. N2O4 in equilibrium with nitrogen dioxide, NO2. Under the given reaction conditions, the ratio of N2O4 molecules to NO2 molecules is 2 to 3 at equilibrium, as shown in the microscopic view. Because NO2 is a brown gas, the equilibrium mixture has a brown color, as shown in the macroscopic view. Let's stress this system by changing the temperature. Click to select either increase temperature or decrease temperature. Okay, so one piece they haven't shown you yet is which direction of this reaction is the exothermic direction which one's the, and which one's the endothermic, okay? So temperature only can affect the reaction based off of which direction is the exothermic side versus the endothermic. Because all equilibrium expressions, one way is exothermic and the other direction is endothermic. So the first thing they're going to do is show you which way that is and then talk to you about how it changes. So let's warm this thing up. Let's increase the temperature. You have increased the temperature of the system by adding heat. The Chatelier's principle states that this stress will be partially offset. This reaction is endothermic, so you can think of heat as a reactant. Heat must be supplied to the reacting mixture. The system can partially remove the added heat by shifting to the right, producing more NO2 and decreasing N2O4, as you can see in the microscopic view. As more NO2, a brown gas, is produced, the color of the equilibrium mixture darkens, as you can see in the macroscopic view. Okay, so the easiest way to deal with this is don't make heat special. Okay, write it in as another reactant like we've done before. If heat is on the reactant side and we put more heat in, right, so we're, we're stressing the system by putting heat on the side of it that it exists, so you're putting heat in and the heat's already over here, it's going to shift away from that to relieve that stress. Okay, So as you add more heat in, because heat's on the reactant side, it's going to shift away from that and make more brown. Okay, Now if we flip it and we cool it, you'll see the opposite effect. You have decreased the temperature of the system by removing heat. This reaction is endothermic, so you can think of heat as a reactant. Heat must be supplied to the reacting mixture. The system can replace some of the heat that was removed by shifting to the left, producing more N2O4 and decreasing NO2, as you can see in the microscopic view. As more N2O4, a colorless gas, is produced, the color of the equilibrium mixture becomes lighter, as you can see in the macroscopic view. Okay, so again, exact opposite. Since heat, again, is still on our reactant side, if we take heat away, so it's start removing the heat, the equilibrium is going to shift to replenish that because you're artificially taking it away. So by cooling it down, you're pulling heat away, so the reaction is going to shift over here to make the gas more colorless in that direction. Okay? 
All right, guys, that's uh, the little video. We're going to go back and do our slides now. So if we go back to Le Chatelier's principle, okay, we've seen how all three of them affect it. Okay? This exact this applet is still posted on my website, so you can always go back to it and rewatch it if you want. Okay? If we take a look at this, and we're going to quickly go through this concept of concentration because we've already covered it in the video, um, what's going to happen if we add more CO2? Okay? So if we take a look. If we put more CO2 in here, that means that this is going to shift and CO2 will go up. Well, that's a stress. So when this system is stressed by putting more CO2 in, it's going to alleviate that stress by trying to get rid of it. So the way it gets rid of the extra CO2, it's going to shift to the left and make the carbonic acid. Okay. Um, sorry about that. If we remove the CO2, okay, and get rid of it, it'll shift to the right to try to replenish it. Okay. So when you add CO2, we have to shift left. If you remove CO2, it has to shift right. Okay. Now, what would happen to the amount of CO2 if you added water? Okay, so let's take a look. If we put water in, water's going to go up artificially because we stress it. So the reaction has to shift left to relieve that stress. But the only way it shifts left is by using some CO2. So you put extra water in, the CO2 is going to get used up to make more H2CO3. So the amount of CO2 actually will go down as a result of adding more water in. Okay? If we take a look at temperature, okay? So if you have, in this example now, we have heat over here. So the forward reaction is exothermic. Okay? So if I increase the temperature, it's going to shift towards the reactants. Okay? So if you increase temperature, it always shifts away from the heat. So it's going to shift this way and we're going to make more reactants. If I decrease the temperature or cool this one, it's going to shift towards the side to replenish the heat that was gone. Okay? Uh, that goes on for heat. So for exothermic reactions, increasing temperature shifts towards the reactants. Think of heat as a product, basically. If you have an endothermic reaction, so if the heat was actually over here, like our first example, an increase in temperature would shift towards the products. Think of heat as a reactant. Okay? The best thing here, again, is treat heat the same way you would SO3 or O2 or SO2 because it is the same result. It's nothing special. If you put extra of this in, it shifts away from it. If you take it away, it shifts towards it. Okay? Now, again, pressure. Only affects equilibrium that has an unequal number of moles of gaseous reactants or products. Okay? We don't care about solids, liquids, aqueous, that kind of stuff. We only worry about gases in terms of that unequalness in here. Okay? If you add pressure, it's going to shift to the side with less moles. So you're trying to get rid of the particles that are there. If you remove pressure, it's going to shift to the side with more moles. Okay? So when you make ammonia gas, it comes from nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. Okay? If you increase the pressure, you actually can make more ammonia. If you decrease the pressure, you actually would use it up and make more of this because our ratio here we have one plus three so we have a four to two ratio right now okay so there's four gases over here for every two of these so because you have more here less here decreasing pressure always goes goes towards the high number of moles increasing pressure goes towards the lower number of moles for pressure okay so that is the end of the Chatelier's principle Okay, uh, we have our lab to do with this, and we're also going to have our lab quiz on this, so make sure you guys are ready for that. Uh, that's it. Thank you.